What's up guys, my name is Julian, your solar expert, and today we're gonna to be comparing the top two residential solar panels in 2025 that you can purchase for your home, which is QCells' Qtron, currently that's the 430 watt version, and then REC's Alpha Pure RX, Currently, it's the 460 watt version. So I'm gonna be giving you a breakdown and explaining the most important specs, where one of them beats out the other, and ultimately, by the end of the video, you'll know which solar panel is gonna be better for your house. I will say that both of these are fantastic, high quality panels out of all the panels on the market. I really do think that these are the top two, but there are a few differences that I think you should consider, and so we're gonna be going over all that in this video. If you would like help going solar, please do not hesitate to reach out to me directly. My cell phone number is 760-473-5878. I personally live in Southern California, but I've built out a network of the top consultants all around the country and service about 30 states. And so if you're in any of these states that I'm gonna pop the map up on the screen right now, any of the states that are in green, please do not hesitate to reach out. I will help you go solar and give you the correct information so you know which system is actually going to benefit you the most and achieve your goal. All right, let's get started comparing these two top panels. First category is the STC slash NMOT. This stands for Standard Test Condition and Nominal Module Operating Temperature. These are both watt ratings. Now, when we say a panel is 400 watts, 500 watts, 600 watts, we're referring to the STC. So when we say it's the Qcells Qtron 430, that's the standard test condition rating. Now, the NMOT is a rating which puts the solar panel into a real world environment. The primary difference is the heat factor when these solar panels get up on your roof, even if it's let's say 80 or 90 degrees outside, really the solar panels, they're absorbing the sunlight directly, right? And so those could be 110, 20, 30 degrees, even if outside, you know, it's not even 100. And so this is a more real world watt rating. Most people think that because the panel is rated at 430, they're gonna get 430 watts, and that's not the case at all. Same thing over here with the REC 460. Realistically, you should see a figure that's in the mid 300s. Now, this NMOT, it's not the maximum, it's a more middle of the road theoretical rating. It can produce more than this. If all of the factors line up and your environment, temperature, sunlight, and everything is ideal, you'll definitely get more than this NMOT. You know, you'd probably see almost 400 watts on the Q cells, maybe a little over 400 watts on the REC. Now, just because the panel is over here, for example, the REC is 30 watts more, that doesn't really make it a better solar panel. If you could only have one solar panel, in theory, I know it's kind of a ridiculous example, but if you could only have one solar panel, or if you're just comparing panel for panel, I need the most amount of power, of course the higher wattage is better, but just kind of a little sneak peek at what's down here, you'll see that the REC460 is just bigger. So that's one way that it has more wattage. It's just more surface area. Okay, moving down to efficiency, these are both basically 22, 22.1. These are both very high efficiency specs. And I would say anything over 22% is going to be super, super premium. Anything over 21% is even considered very good. Anything over 20%, pretty good, okay. Anything under 20%, you're gonna just wanna stay away from. As you can see, both of these panels have top of the line efficiency. In terms of degradation, this is a super important spec. This is explaining how much loss in power production is going to occur over a 25 year period. Now, a lot of panels, they're in like the teens, it'll be like a 15% drop over 25 years, which is still pretty impressive, but both of these panels are the very top of the line. The REC slightly wins this category by only having an 8% drop over 25 years, which is only about a quarter of a percent year over year. It's very impressive. Same thing over here, you're not even losing 10% over 25 years, which is basically about a quarter of a percent a year. Again, just adding up to just 1.4, 2% more over 25 years. It's almost negligible, but technically speaking, the REC has the best degradation spec of any panel on the market. There are a couple of other panels that meet this 8% exactly, but there is no panel that has less than an 8% drop 
over a 25 year period. So this is the best of the best in this category. Now, temperature coefficient is a big one that I just don't really hear people talking about that much, but I especially am you know, sensitive to this spec because I live in San Diego personally. I sell to a lot of people that live in the desert, Arizona, basically, people that are in hot environments, especially in the summertime. And so what this temperature coefficient is measuring is there's two numbers here. First, you have the percentage, which here it's minus 0.3%. And then over here, it's minus 0.24%. But then the second is the top range of the normal operating temperature. And so essentially what this spec is saying is for the Q cells, so let's say it goes to 110 degrees, it's going to decrease 0.3% approximately in performance output. Now, if we look at the REC 460, this is where if you're gonna be in like a desert environment, th this is where the REC I think really shines because not only for every degree is it going to decrease in performance just a little bit less, you know, minus 0.24, it's about a sixth less, one sixth less than the minus 0.3, but also you're starting the equation three degrees hotter. So still through 112 degrees, you'll still get the ideal performance. And so the REC just handles the heat a little bit better. And for, for that reason, it's one of my favorite panels. All right, let's talk about the weather ratings here. The front load is essentially how much weight can go over the panel. That would be like snow. And then rear load is wind uplift. And so you could say that the Q cells can handle snow a little bit better, but it doesn't have quite as good of an uplift rating. Whereas the REC, it can handle 146 pounds per square foot versus the 169, but it has a little bit more of an uplift force rear load rating. So if you live in an environment that you're really concerned about snow or wind, like let's say you live in the Rocky Mountains or you live in like Florida where you're dealing with hurricanes, a conversation to have is more about what kind of railing that you're using, not just the weather ratings for the panels themselves. It's a combination of the two. So just wanted to kind of explain that real fast. As far as the shade zones, the solar panels have come a long way. In the past, it was like if the corner of the panel is in the shade, the whole panel might as well be in the shade. Now there's bypass diodes, and then also there's different zones within the panel that they make, which are all independently performing. To have three zones is still very advanced. Most panels have like two zones, if that. The REC PRX has four zones, which is really great for shading. So if you're dealing with like an environment where there's some loosely spaced trees, where there's gonna be shadows that are spaced or kind of like loose shadows traveling across the array, I think that the REC 460 does a really good job of helping keep that production up even when only some of the panel is in the shade. Still, the Q cells does a good job as well, but the PRX just is, is pushing that spec to the next level. For warranty, 25 years is standard for both of these panels with the degradation warranties being up here. That's the same. Now the dimensions, this, all right, so this is something that I think a lot of people aren't really gonna think about is that big of a deal, but really this is going to make it so certain panels, you can actually fit more of them in a space. For example, Let's say you can fit 18 panels with the Pure RX, but because the width is, as you can see, this panel over here, the Pure RX is almost 48 inches wide, whereas over here, this is just a little over 44 and a half inches wide. And so that, in this case, three inch difference, seems like not that big of a deal, but when you add that up, like let's say you have like a 10 by two array, that's gonna be almost 30 inches longer. And so that's essentially almost a panel. And so there are times when even though the REC 460 is technically a higher wattage rated panel, we can fit more Q cells in there because of basically the shape of the puzzle piece. Obviously having a panel there is better than not. If you're fighting for production and have limited roof space, that's where this really matters, of course. Okay, for power density, this is ultimately how much power each panel produces given you take the dimensional difference out of the equation. If you were just to take like a one square foot sample in the middle of each panel and measure how much power that one square foot produces, I also use the NMOT rating, so not the unrealistic world, but the real world watt rating. These are the final two numbers. And so as you can see, the REC 460 will produce slightly more 0.14 watts 
per square foot more, which is not a drastic difference by any means. Like I said in, in the beginning, both of these are two of the very top panels in the market. But if you really want to break it down and you're like, hey, I want the best of the best of the best, the REC 460 in terms of degradation and the power density are going to be the two most important specs that are going to help you produce the most amount of kilowatt hours. And I would say that technically the REC 460 is the best panel on the market in 2025 and with the Q-Cell Qtron being a close second. But how about money? Let's talk money for a second because everyone always asks me, well, Julian, great information on the specs of the panels or the batteries or inverters or whatever the topic that we're talking about. By the way, I have a whole no bunch of other videos talking about other panels, batteries, etc. There's a lot of aspects of solar. The financing is a big one. But let's talk about the price. This is a range of cents per watt. So how you would read this is 50 to 75 cents per watt if the panel is exactly 400 watts and you're buying it for 50 cents a watt, that's $200 for the panel. Now what these prices don't oftentimes include is taxes, shipping, or freight. When you're buying a solar panel through a contractor, we have agreements with the distributors and our price points include a lot of extra things that you may not be considering. Like for example, they drop it at your house the day of the installation so the contractor doesn't actually have a warehouse facility themselves. This is one of the deals that a lot of contractors have work out and is included in the pricing. And so you have a concierge delivery service included in the price point through the contractor to where as if you're buying it from the internet somewhere, you're gonna get to the end and then they're gonna say, okay, here's the tax and oh, how do you wanna get this pallet of panels that weighs 2,000 pounds to your front door? And that's gonna be another few thousand dollars. And so the reason I did a range is because every contractor has a different deal with every distributor. What I mean by that is if you are a contractor that has a 20 year relationship with the distributor, you're going to get better pricing than if you are just some contractor that started buying your equipment from there a year or two ago and especially if you're a homeowner that just walks into a what's intended to be a B2B distributor and they're going to give you a crazy high. It could even be higher price um, to actually get these panels shipped to your house if you're just a homeowner than what I even have on this board. So this is a fluctuating range that completely depends on who you are, your buying history and where you're purchasing from as well. These panels also cost different amounts in different parts of the country. So. Long story short, that's why I usually don't get into price on these videos because it fluctuates so much and I don't wanna tell you that the panel's 200 bucks and then you realize that for you to get it to your house, it's 450 bucks. So that hopefully explains the pricing scenario of me hardly ever putting any pricing on the board here. All right, so once again, if you would like help going solar and you're in any of these states that are in green on the map here, please do not hesitate to reach out. My phone number is 760-473-5878 and I have both of these panels available and pretty much I believe the majority of all the places we service. All right, talk to you soon.